Hey everybody, today on Rado Runs Through, we're taking a look at the Shapers of Gaia. But before I get going, please turn your subtitles on to the Klingon channel so that when I make rules goofs, you'll know what they are. And if you've done that, well, then welcome to Gaia, which is a planet that long ago was ravaged by some sort of catastrophe, and we ended up living underground in a vault. But now, generations later, we have come back to the surface, and we are going to try to restore the flora and the fauna to its former verdancy and score points along the way. And I'm going to show you how it works today in a two-player run-through. I am the Telrin Aviary, Jen is Synthara Lab, and... And uh, we've already got our starting tiles that we can place randomly. Everybody starts with one of each of the five resources. We've got one, or in gen cases, two special uh, uh, critters that we can introduce back to the world. And we are ready to go. So, I am the first player, uh, because i got the little first player marker here on my resource tracker. And how does the game work? Well, that's hard. It's very simple. Each turn, you are either going to introduce an animal to Gaia, or you are going to restore biomes, one or the other. And we're going to keep doing that until uh, the, uh, the uh, player is down to only one animal type, whether it is carnivore, herbivore, or scavenger left on their board, or the final biome is drawn from this big old stack of tiles. So, one of those two things triggers the end of the game. And for starters, of these two options, I think I'm going to introduce an animal. So, um, when you do that, first of all, you can move up to three spaces from where you currently are, and that's where you are either going to deploy the carnivore, the herbivore, or the scavenger, paying the resources as necessary based on where you want to deploy them. Then you get to uh, specify what type of animal it is, uh, you get to activate the abilities of it, um, all kinds of stuff. But... Let's go on ahead and look a little bit closer so we can start making some decisions. We are starting here in the vault. I have the uh, white meeple, and I can move up to three spaces. Now, over the course of the game, we are going to have more than just these one, two, three, four, five, six different starting tiles around the vault. We are going to, you know, expand the biome. But for now, since uh, these are the only places I could go, and actually I've only got three to choose from because we cannot introduce animals to water tiles unless we're one of the characters that has a special ability that overrides that. Um, but, so as it is, I could uh, introduce an animal to this forest, to this crystal area, or this mushroom area. And to decide, I need to think about a lot of stuff, including what tiles I'm holding in my hand. Because on a future turn, when I decide to expand the biome, well, coincidentally, totally randomly, I've got one of each. I've got another forest, another uh, mushroom forest, and or swamp, and another crystal cave. Although, it is interesting, this crystal cave and this mushroom are a bit more expensive. Not only do you have to spend the food that the animal needs to go here, but you have to spend general purpose nutrient tokens as well, which are very, very valuable. But that's why these spaces produce more than this space, which which is cheaper to move animals into, but it does not produce quite as much as you can see. So anyway, I'm thinking in the future, and this is all hidden, nobody knows what I've got in my hand, that <clears throat> once I have introduced an animal, I'm going to want to introduce another animal later on into the same type of environment. Because there's a lot of set collection elements in this game. And it's interesting. You know, if I had nothing but forest, I'd probably be thinking about, hey, I should go for the forest, uh, because I can make a whole bunch of forest and put a bunch of animals in the forest so I could build a stronger forest-based engine rather than crystal engine rather than spore engine engine. So, um, but since I can do anything, I could go to any of them. But the other thing I need to think about is looking at my board, which of all of these animals am I going to bring into the world? Now, uh, the higher up the food chain they go, the more expensive they are, as you can see. Or actually, you can't quite see the predators get very expensive at five. So, uh, at the beginning of the game, I've only got one of any type of resource. Whether it is seeds to um, introduce the animals to forests, or crystals, 
or shards to introduce them to crystal caves or spores to introduce them to mushroom swamps. So, uh, that means if I've only got one to spend, I am either going to introduce this scavenger or this scavenger to Gaia. If I introduce this one, I give myself this ability. If I introduce this one, I give myself this ability. And this ability is my special card that I started the game with. This is a scavenger more powerful than any other one in the game. And so, I think I'd like to get my super scavenger up and running all the quicker. So how about we say, hey, I'm going to try and put this scavenger somewhere out in the world. And seeing as how the biomes I can construct right now, the crystal and the mushroom cost a little bit more. Uh, you can see there's this extra uh, symbol in the center. These are a bit more expensive to deploy animals to. How about... I just start focusing on this force and then try to deploy more into this force so I can keep my cost down, even if I'm not making as much income. So let's go for it. Let's go on ahead and say, hey, I can move up to three steps. I'm just going to move one because there's not very far to go yet. And uh, I am going to deploy, oh, which one was it? This animal right where I am. Now, the cost for this is... One of the type of uh, food associated with the environment. It's a forest. I have to spend one seed. So now I'm out of seeds to deploy a level one scavenger to a uh, forest. Okay, done. This is going to potentially score me points at the end of the game. This is potentially going to give me uh, special powers throughout the rest of the game. And so the next thing I do is, uh, you know, after I've paid and put it on the board, I look to see, did I make any of, uh, ab abilities happen immediately? This symbol means it's an immediate ability. This symbol means it's an ability I have for the rest of the game. So if I had chosen this scavenger, not only would I have a victory point, but I would have given myself new directives, which is a power that would be completely unique to me and I would have for the rest of the game in that um, whenever I refill my hand of biome cards, I get to draw five uh, and keep three of them. So I have more control over trying to get biomes that work really well for me. That could be a very handy power, but I didn't choose that one. I chose this one that said, hey, put your special card into play, which is what I'm going to do. Remember, I talked about this. I've got this special scavenger. Now, if I had chosen this one to give myself new directives, I would have to uh, specify, well, hey, this scavenger, what type is it? And over here, you can see there are one, two, three scavenger cards, three predator cards, and three herbivore cards. So if I were doing the other scavenger, I'd pick it. To, I'd say it's this scavenger, this scavenger, or this scavenger, which gives me access to different conversion abilities. Or on the other side of every card, they give me access to a resource generator. If I were to, if I were saying the scavenger I just placed had this ability, it would either be, hey, it can generate crystals or it can convert crystals into nutrients and seeds. Now that's if I were grabbing, say, one of these three, which is the last step I do when I'm introducing an animal. I declare what type of animal is it? But I'm breaking the rules, folks, because since I took this scavenger it is, very specifically, this card. A more powerful scavenger than you would ever find otherwise. It's still two-sided, so I have to decide. Do I want this scavenger to be able to eat any of the basic foodstuffs to generate two energy? Or do I want it to be able to, whenever I activate it, consume an energy to get rid of toxicity, that's nice, and consume nutrients to get any type of resource I want? So those are both nice. The problem is right now, I have not introduced any toxicity into my environment. So uh, whichever side of this, I'm going to get to do that power right now. And doing this power right now will be wasting the spend energy to get rid of toxicity. So I think I'm going to now and forever have this particular power with my scavenger. I can activate this right now to convert any of the three basic foodstuffs, the uh, shards, the seeds, and the uh, spores, and I can convert them into double energy. Now, this scavenger lives in the forest where I just put it. So I have to put it over here in the forest ecosystem. And over the course of the game, the more times I introduce animals into the forest, the more cards I have in my forest ecosystem. And every time I introduce one here, I activate that card and every other card. So you can start creating combos out of these various things. <clears throat> so 
anyway, I put this in the forest. That represents this scavenger. And uh, now, right now, I can generate two energy by eating. Well, I don't have any um, seeds, so I can get rid of a crystal or a spore. What the heck? Let's go on and get rid of a crystal. Alrighty. And so now I've got a lot of energy, uh, no seeds, no crystals. I've still got one nutrient and one spore that might help me later. Okay. That was it. Uh, I moved where I wanted to introduce the animal. I introduced the animal. I paid the resources that were necessary. And um, then I activated any powers, which in that case had me skip the, hey, pick a card and use the card. And all right. And so my turn is over. Just that simple. It is now Jen's turn. And if Jen wants to introduce an animal, she's got one less place because there could only be one animal per tile. So Jen could move over here and introduce something to the Crystal Caves or over here to the, uh, the Mushroom Swampy Place. Or she could do the other thing. She could start restoring biomes. And I think that's what she's going to do. Because there's one big trade-off I made by putting my Super Scavenger right here in the inner ring. As part of setup, we have three behavior cards. These are all two-sided. So every time you play, you're going to get a different combination of stuff. And if you deploy your animals in such a way that they adhere to the behavior cards, they will um, produce additional bonus points at the end of the game. Scavengers in this game, because we have scavenger uh, this side instead of this side, scavengers want to be on the outskirts. So I very foolishly put a scavenger on the inside, which means my scavenger is not going to be able to produce a bonus point for me. Now, I don't mind too terribly much because here's the deal. Herbivores score points. Um, each herbivore can score one point for each scavenger it's next to. So what I'm thinking is, hey, I put a scavenger here. If I put an herbivore here, that herbivore will be worth points because I've got the scavenger. And then later on, I can put some more scavengers out here. If I have surround an herbivore here with a bunch of scavengers, I'll be happy. I just want to get access to my superpower a little bit quicker. So anyway, herbivores in this game want to be next to scavengers to be worth extra points. Instead of wanting to be on the outskirts, uh, which meant they would have been worth two points if that's the card that had come up. Predators, meanwhile, they want to be in the middle ring that we haven't developed yet at all. And if you can put them there, they're worth three bonus points at the end of the game. As opposed to predators wanting to be next to herbivores, in which case they're worth extra points. So, the thing is, um, I just put a scavenger in a place that's not ideal for it. Jen doesn't want to do that. So Jen is going to expand the biome uh, so that on a future turn, if she's putting scavengers out, she wants to put them in the outer ring like they want to be. And it's at the beginning of the game, you probably are going to put out scavengers because they're the cheap. Uh, scavengers cost one or two resources. Herbivores cost three or four. And carnivores or predators, the most expensive ones, they cost five. So anyway. So Jen is going to, and I haven't even looked at her biome cards yet. Okay, so what does she got? All right, so she's got another water tile, which, remember, you cannot deploy animals on. Uh, she's got a forest tile that's a little bit more expensive, but a little bit more powerful. And she's got a fungus card, which is the cheaper kind. It, doesn't, it only costs the fungus to move here, whereas this forest costs seeds plus nutrients. General purpose nutrients. So, Jen can deploy one, two, or all three of these tiles if she wants on her turn. So, you can see down here at the bottom, you can do this whole tile uh, deployment up to three times. Because that's what you generally have in your hand. So, where is Jen going to deploy? Um, well, first of all, <clears throat> she doesn't deploy based on where she is. When we're putting out animals, we move our character around and then we put out an animal like you saw me do. When we're um, rebuilding the biome, we have to use our robot buddy here uh, who feels like he's straight out of, uh, oh, what's it? Uh, Lapida capsule in the sky, except they don't have the big long legs. So wherever that character is, is where we can deploy our biomes. There's a little bit more to it than that. Uh, basically, when you deploy, you, uh, you put a biome next to the robot plus another. 
So right now, because that's where the robot is, Jen could put this mushroom here next to the existing one, or she could put it here. She couldn't put it here because it has to be next to the robot and um, two tiles. So it'd have to be like this, whereas this is only putting it next to one. So that is the first rule. Um, if that if you would cover up DNA tokens, you get to grab those, and those are ways you can score points at the end of the game. Then you move your caretaker to the tile you just placed. Um, and each player gets one of the benefits from the biome. Uh, the Whoever built it gets to choose what they want, and everybody else gets the other benefit. Then, um, after you've done this one, two, or three times, you refill your hand. Okay, so... Jen says, you know what, let's go on ahead and um, just put this over here, move the robot to it, and uh, very importantly, Jen now gets to choose, does she want a seed or does she want a crystal? Whichever one she doesn't take is what I'm going to get. And if she looks over me, she can see I don't have any seeds or crystals, but Jen needs to think about what she wants. She needs to think about what animal she's going to try to grab. And I think she'll take the crystal, which means me, and if we were playing a three-player game, which is the maximum player count, me and the other player would get a seed. So, uh, Jen grabs another crystal, which means she could do a level two scavenger now because she's got two crystals if she wants to put them in a cave. Uh, whereas me, I was stuck with my level ones. All right, so me, I get the other thing. I get a seed. Hooray, I'm back to having one seed. So Jen could stop there, or she could keep going. And she is going to keep going. She is now going to put this forest out. And with that, she'll put it right here. Right? And now... Uh, because it's next to the robot and it's next to two other tiles. So she gets to decide, does she want a spore or does she want to do the other thing? Spend a nutrient, that's what she's going to do, and get another crystal. So now she could get up to herbivores. She could start putting herbivores out in the world um, next round because she's got so many crystals. And actually, I look a bit more closely. There's more to it than that. It's spend a nutrient to get a crystal and a victory point. So, Jen is uh, looking pretty good over there with some victory points. Hoorah. Okay. And now Jen could stop or she could keep going. And she says, what the heck? Let's keep going. Oh, wait. Oh, but wait. Don't forget for me. Um, I get the other thing, which is I get a spore. Yay. Now I can do level two into mushroom uh, zones. And hey, there's two mushroom zones thanks to Jen. And so, Jen's going to put all three out. She's going to place this one out. And she will place it right here. And the robot will move over. And boom, Jen has gotten her first sample of DNA. There's a, You can score huge points with these at the end of the game if you do your set collection right. I'll talk about that more as we go. But anyway, Jen has to decide. Does she want to get an energy or does she want to get a nutrient? And I think she'll go on ahead and take a nutrient to get back what she lost. So now she's where she started. She has one of everything except she's got three three crystals, which means she could start placing herbivores. So that's pretty nice. Okay. Um, you know, if she, if she wants to spend that much. So that was it. Jen, um, she did it through, oops, I'm sorry, that's the wrong one. She did three times. She, uh, you know, put one next to the robot, move the robot, put another one next to the robot, move the robot and everybody, oh wait, did I get my payday? Right. No, I didn't. I get an energy so I have even more energy now. I am overflowing with energy, which is great for some things and not great for other things. Uh, but uh, hopefully I'll be able to take good use of uh, this huge amount of energy I've got over the course of the game. Okay, so that was Jen's turn. And now at the end of her turn, because uh, you know, however many uh, tiles she'd played, she'd draw that many more. And remember, this is one of the timers of the game. So Jen just got three more. She got, oh, wow, two temples. Oh, wow, wow. Oh, I wish I had those because I really kind of, I have a lot of special powers that focus on temples. I wish these were mine. But anyway, so she got another water tile, which is a place where you cannot deploy animals, and two temples, which are more expensive places that you can deploy animals. So that's what Jen's got, and um, she's done. Okay, so uh, it is my turn again. And this is very exciting. There is a whole new world of uh, possibilities that Jen has created. But here's the thing. I would like now to get another scavenger out. And I'd like to put it over here. Because remember, I was talking about this. Scavengers want to be on the outskirts. But Jen figured, yeah, that's probably what you want to do, isn't it? Too bad. 
I put a water tile out here. So um, I do not get to piggyback off of Jen and be the first to put a scavenger on the outskirts. But Jen has created the beginnings of an inner ring. And remember, inner ring is where we want to put um, predators. But predators are crazy expensive to deploy. I can't afford that right now. So even though that's what all Jen has done, I think... I am going to uh, stick with my original plan. Try to expand over here. Uh, grab some of these DNA for in-game scoring, if I can if I can set it up right. But also to get some scavengers over here and an herbivore over here. So this herbivore is gets a lot of points by being surrounded by all these scavengers I've done. Right? I'm going to stick with that original plan. Okay, so uh, that means if I want to get over here, i got to do the same thing Jen just did. Every turn, it's either deploy animals or expand the biome. If I want to expand the biome, as you can see, I'd have to do it from way over here, though. Because here's where Robbie the Robot is. And that's not good. I want Robbie the Robot to be way the heck over here where I'm planning to expand. And uh, that's going to be a problem. Or is it? Well, not for me, because as you recall... I am loaded with energy. And one of the main uses for energy in this game is before you move yourself around to deploy animals or before you start putting tiles down, if you spend an energy, you can just jump to any place you want. You can jump the robot around by spending energy or you can jump yourself around by spending energy. And I need the robot back over here to expand. So I'm going to spend one energy so that I'm not stuck building here or over here, which was not my plan. So, I am going to uh, put a forest down right here. And the energy allowed the robot to make it all the way over there. And now I don't have to spend energy again. Now I can start expanding uh, towards these DNA, same way Jen exp expanded that one over there. But before I play anymore, I've got to decide, am I going to give myself crystals, or am I going to give myself spores? I think it's a pretty easy answer. I've already got two. Let's get up to level three for spores. Um, because, hey, those spores might let me... Uh, I mean, if I get enough spores, I could be the first to build a predator over here in this spot that Jen created. I'm up to three spores now. Now, that means Jen gets a crystal, and she says, thank you very much! Now I'm one away, and I'm like, oh, dear! Oh, no! Jen is... Oh, man, should I have given her that? Because now she is one away from being able to put a predator... Well, um... Well, no, but... There, uh, you know, this is a bunch of crystals. She could put a she could put a predator out in a crystal area, and the only one is there, which is not the best place to do it. So, okay, I'm gonna live with it. I'm gonna take the spore, um, and that meant Jen got the crystal. And if we were playing a three player game, the other player would get the crystal too. And so I could stop or I could keep going. And uh, let's go on ahead and get all these out, so I can work my way out. Um, because remember, I want to get some scavengers over here. Hmm. All right. So one thing I'm thinking about, as I decide, hey, am I going to build here or here, and then here or here? Because remember, you always have to build next to the robot in two. Um, and even if you move the robot around, you still always have to build next to two existing tiles. So you can't say, I'm moving the robot over here. We can't do that. Um, so here's the deal. My super scavenger, which I haven't activated again, but I want to activate eventually, has blue DNA. And because of that, I want to collect blue DNA. Uh, because if I get a blue DNA, that means at the end of the game, I can say, hey, this blue DNA maps onto this scavenger, and it's worth extra points. If at the end of the game, I've got some blue DNA, but I've got no animals that match that blue DNA, it loses me points. So that's something you always have to be careful about, trying to make sure the DNA that you sample matches the animals you've actually deployed. So I think I want to get to this space. So buttons. Let's go on ahead and put this. Oh, hold on a second. I was about to put this crystal right here. But if I do, then I will have given Jen the perfect place to put the predator that she wants to play. So I say, uh-uh, I'm not doing that. I'm going to put this little swamp right there. Okay. So, and then the robot jumps over to it, and everybody gets, well, I get to choose. Do I want a crystal, or do I want to spend a nutrient to get a seed and a point? I want seeds. I want to keep pushing seeds up because I need seeds to deploy more uh, to animals to the forest. So the more seeds I get, the better. So I am going to spend the one nutrient I have to give myself a point, same way Jen did, we, and to give myself a seed. But here's the deal, folks. If I do that, I just gave her a crystal. Yikes! 
Oh, man, she is going to be very happy about that. Okay, but yeah, there we go. And so now I'm going to place this last one. It's going to go right here. And um, I do not have to associate this DNA with this card until the end of the game. But I'm just going to do it now to remember that, hey, I've already got one of them taken care of. Jen needs to get a blue animal before the end of the game to take care of that blue DNA she's got. We're going to come over here. And the robot comes over here. And I can choose a seed or I can spend a nutrient. Well, hey. I don't have any nutrients, so I don't think I'm going to choose that. I'm going to choose the seed. And now I'm up to three seeds. And that means Jed says, oh, great. She happens to have a nutrient. It's a good thing she collected it back last turn. She'll spend that nutrient to give herself a spore and another point. Okay. Boom, boom, boom. So um, there we go. And that was my turn. At the end of my turn, I draw three. Remember, if I had already deployed this scavenger, instead I'd draw five, keep three, and put the other two on the deck on the top so I would know what's coming. Also, by the way, folks, you'll notice, hey, we're coming up to level twos pretty soon. In fact, we're already starting to see them. I just grabbed some twos, which are going to be more expensive, but are going to be more commonly ways that you can produce lots of stuff. Okay. So that was my turn. I've done the biome thing. It is Jen's turn now. And Jen has five crystals. That is fantastic. She says, hey, I think I'm going to deploy an animal. And remember, uh, when you deploy an animal, you can move up to three. By the way, on the other side of this is the reminder that um, for an energy, you can teleport the robot or the shaper. Um, or no, the caretaker is the robot. We are the shapers. Anyway, but Jen doesn't need to spend any energy. She doesn't have to go very far. One, two, three. Hello, robot. Um, Jen has come to the place that I have created. And um, remember scavengers belong on the outskirts. She could put anything she wants here. She could literally afford to put any animal type she wants. She's got so much crystal for this crystal cave. But I think Jen is going to put a scavenger here. And which one does she want to do? She has a few choices. But since she's crazy rich with crystals, I think she'll skip the level ones, the safety protocol and the rapid life cycle. And uh, she could either go to the level twos of the clone experiment or the stasis chambers. Now, the way the stasis chamber works, you notice it's got this little, these double things here. Um, the, the, this herbivore and this scavenger associated with the stasis chamber. As soon as she deploys this or this, she'll have the level one stasis chamber available. Once she's deployed both of them, she'll have the level two stasis chamber available. And the level one says she could spend energy, two energy, which she doesn't have, to be able to move animals directly to the vault where they can be worth more points than normal. So that's nice, but uh, Jen says, nope, nope, nope. Plus, uh, she really likes this clone experiment. This is what she's going to do. She is going to take this. She is going to spend one Two. And what else does she need to spend? Let's go back here and look at this again. Um, yep, she has to spend a nutrient as well. Uh, in addition, because this is a level two, she uh, going to a sh uh, crystal cave, she needs two shards. She also needs a nutrient. It's right there in the center. And it's going to go here. But now you might say, wait a minute, I've been keeping track. She has no nutrients. That's true. Um, whenever you are in a situation where you need to spend nutrients or energy... These three resources, the, uh, the shards, the spores, and the seeds, these are just the normal resources that you use to deploy animals. These are special, the energy and the nutrients, uh, they, they run other stuff. And if you ever need them and you don't have them, you can, uh, uh, instead of having to spend them, you can take toxicity, which is negative points at the end of the game. Of course it is. Look at this thing. So Jen doesn't have any nutrients. So she will introduce some toxicity to the world to be able to get this scavenger out here without those nutrients. And she gets to um, activate her clone experiment, which is to say, normally when you deploy a scavenger, you grab one scavenger card to declare what it is, but Jen is making clones. So she's going to get to grab two scavenger cards at once, and she's going to get to activate both of them, um, which is very, very cool. So let's look at the scavengers. Um, this one either generates crystals or eats crystals to make nutrients and seeds. This one generates seeds or eats seeds to generate nutrients and spores. And this one um, is, yeah, wow, there's one of each. Okay. And the bummer is none of them 
produce crystals. She was hoping to be able to get a scavenger that would generate more crystals so she could get her crystal climb back up. This one eats crystals. No, 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 it's wrong. The other side of this generates crystals, right? Um, you know, if Jen wanted to, let's see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, none of these combo well together. This generates crystals, but the other two don't eat them. This generates spores, but the other two don't eat them. It could very well have been that there were three scavenger cards out here, two or three of which would actually be able to combo together. And if I'd been paying more attention, I might have noticed, hey, none of them combo well together, do they? No, they don't. Well, tell you what. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take this one, which is the one that Jen would normally take, and we're going to take it as a crystal generator because Jen wants to get her crystals back up. And so she adds this to her ecosystem, and then the space refills. And okay, this one now says, hey, you can um, consume crystals to generate seeds and energy. So Jen could take this second one, and she could combine it with her first one. And that means this will create a crystal that will automatically get consumed to make energy and seeds. So Jen, if she takes both of these together, she's got a seed generating, a seed and, and energy generating engine. And the more energy you got, the more easily you can get around the planet really quick. So that's pretty cool. But that's not what Jen wants right now. Right now, Jen just wants more. So Jen's going to take both of these. And by the way, this is a blue, which is very, very nice because it matches the blue DNA she got. So Jen is going to add them to her ecosystem, one of which is blue. So that means this blue DNA is already scoring points. She's got to get rid of this toxicity. She'll try and do that eventually. Now, right off the bat, you may notice, wait a minute. Jen only has one ecosystem. Uh, um, it's a combined ecosystem where regardless of whether she puts animals into forests or swamps or caves, all the uh, creatures go into her same one ecosystem. Whereas me, I've got a different ecosystem for each. That's really interesting because that means Jen can mix and match animals from different environments to find ways to get them to combine. Um, but on the other hand, me, uh, a, a given ecosystem cannot support more than four cards. So I could have up to nine or up to 12 cards over here four um, uh, forest, four swamp, and four uh, cave, while Jen can only have four, period. So in some in some ways, she's doing really well, and in other ways, she's restricted. But a lot of her powers let her deal with this restriction, and the fact that she can combine animals from different ecosystems is a pretty big deal that makes her pretty special. All of the different playable characters are radically different. There's six to choose from, and they are all just completely full of special game-breaking powers that almost make you feel like sometimes you're playing a different game. But anyway, so that was it for Jen. And just to rewind, she rushed over here really quick. She uh, spent some energy and some nutrients and some toxicity to be able to get this out. It was a level two, which, by the way, is worth two points. And because it was a cloned experiment, she got to deploy two cards. So from now on, because that's the thing, if I want to activate my scavenger, I have to do another forest animal. If Jen wants to activate these, she could do an animal in any location because everything combos together. She just has less space for animals. So we'll see how that continues to evolve over the course of the game. And anyway, that was it for Jen. Oh, except, of course, for the last step. Activate all species cards in the row where you placed a new species card. Crystal, crystal. She is still now in a position where if uh, there are crystal caves, she could be deploying high-level predators. But if that's the case, she wants to put caves in the center because, remember, that's where predators want to be so they can score extra points. And now, as it happens... Oh no, Jen does not have any crystal cave creatures. But she does have temples. And the thing about temples are, they are wild. They could be considered a cave, a swamp, or a forest. So Jen could use all her crystals to uh, get a predator into this temple, which means she'll score extra points uh, and a whole bunch of other stuff. So that's kind of what Jen is looking for in the future. But right now, folks, it is my turn. And what comes next? Well, I'm not quite sure. But if you'd like to watch this uh, biome continue to evolve, you can hit that I in the top right corner screen and go to the extended playthrough, or you can go straight to final thoughts by hitting the I in the top right corner screen or follow the links down in the show notes. Your choice in five, four, three, two, one.